I'm Joe Conscious. I'm a space scientist with NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. Well, starting with the eruptions on August 2nd through today, through August 5th, there have been three big eruptions from the sun. All of them included solar flare pieces as well as coronal mass ejections. The solar flare parts got here very quickly within a few minutes of the eruption at the sun, and the impacts were pretty modest or very minimal in terms of HF radio and things that operate on the day side of the Earth. The big question was the wait for the coronal mass ejections because they take longer to arrive, and we were worried that they would pile up on top of each other and cause a really strong disturbance when they came to Earth. We saw the first coronal mass ejection yesterday afternoon, and it was an individual one, and it didn't really do very much. It wasn't very strong. The shock was pretty weak, and it had some very, maybe some very small disruptions, but maybe even not. Then through today, Friday, we were waiting, looking at the solar wind data, and about two hours ago, we saw another pulse in the solar wind. And shortly followed, about an hour later, by yet another pulse in the solar wind. So uh, by, by our account, that may account for the three coronal mass ejections. And right now, we're at the very beginning of a geomagnetic storm. So right now, we know that the, the disturbances have arrived, the solar wind is fast, it's energized, but we're not sure how energized it is. So over the next 6 to 12 hours, we'll really start to see the true, the true character of this disturbance. We've been in touch with customers all week as these events have unfolded. We've been in touch with the airlines as they're planning their, particularly their polar operations that are dependent on high frequency communications. Uh, today was a big day for NASA. There was the Juno launch from Cape uh, Canaveral and they didn't want to launch into a solar radiation storm. And fortunately, the launch window and the launch occurred just prior to this last pulse, so they got away fine. We've also been in touch with electric power grid operators, so they know the situation as far as what may be pending in terms of the geomagnetic storm. And we've also been in touch with GPS users to try to alert them that things might not be just right for them too. Will we see aurora and how far south? Uh, people always want to know that, and there are so many bits that go with that, including the, uh, the local weather conditions, the, uh, the phase of the moon, although the phase of the moon is pretty favorable. And if, just if, this turns out to be a strong storm, in North America tonight would be a good night to go out and look, even as far south as, say, Colorado. The Space Weather Prediction Center is the nation's official source of space weather forecasts and warnings. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week watching the sun and keeping people advised of what's going on.